To augment the written manual, this DVD will show examples of some play activities, in particular focusing on the communication and interaction taking place during these sessions. You can incorporate these strategies when playing with your child. For much more detail, including the underlying principles and rationale, please refer to the manual. The play space model, described in detail on page 29 of the manual, stresses the importance of the interrelationship between the child, the play environment and the play partner. As we'll see, the play partner has a very important role to play. To get the most from play sessions, remember the communication cycle on page 30. Having started communicating using verbal and non-verbal means, Wait and give the child time to respond. When they do respond, interpret what you think the child means and respond to the child to confirm your interpretation. And so the communication cycle continues. And keep in mind the three phases of play interaction. Greeting and informing the child of the upcoming play activity. participating in the play and finally finishing the activity. Pages 38 to 40 of the manual contain lots of guidance on how to set up the play environment including aspects such as safety, storage and labelling of equipment, setting the right level of stimulation and several other tips. This approach will help to maximise opportunities for communication and therefore foster learning and development. The strategies used in this approach are built around the MOVE model. M, my emerging play types and strategies. O, opportunity for participation during play. V, visual systems used during play and E, equipment used during play. There are many types of play and these are summarised by the various rungs of this ladder. This is not so much a rigid sequence which all children go through, but more a framework to be used to determine where a child may be and what is the next step when supporting the child to develop play skills. So let's see some examples of some play activities. Children love to use their senses, particularly vision, touch and sound, to find out more about their world. A popular visual activity is playing peekaboo. Here Hannah is enjoying playing with the many different openings on this front door, trying to guess which one is going to be used. As well as helping develop fine motor skills, pouring rice involves several sensory experiences, including sound and touch. Here Lily is finding out how much rice can be put in a beaker. And whether budgies like rice. Play-doh is another good touch activity, and it can often lead to other types of play such as pretend games, which we'll look at later. Here Lily is having fun making sausages, which she'll later take to the kitchen. Other sensory activities include blowing bubbles, banging on drums, and toys that encourage movement with visual and sound experiences. Here, Kieran is surrounded by plastic balls and is enjoying movement, touch, colour and making a noise. Climbing is another great challenge, but obviously needs careful supervision.
Children enjoy many physical activities, including walking, running, jumping, and crawling. In this next stage, children like to investigate how things work. They may do this by banging things together or tipping out the contents of containers or just pushing a button to see what happens. In this stage, children love to answer the question, how does this work? Or what happens if I do this? Having explored things, children will progress to doing things with them, such as putting things together and taking them apart. and catching fish, which here also involves colour matching. Building blocks enable children to easily create something new, in this case something quite big. And of course, what goes up As a child becomes more aware of their world and their place in it, They'll gradually extend this by playing pretend games, with a doll perhaps, with carers or with other children. The most common pretend games are situations the child is already familiar with, but they soon develop the ability to pretend beyond their own experience, maybe running the trains, or dressing up, which can be just a hat, a scarf, or a wig. There are other very important areas of play to encourage with a child, including creative activities such as drawing, craft and music, physical activities and reading. See page 65 of the manual for more ideas. A very important aspect to remember is the level of a child's participation, which can be seen as three levels. Initially the child will observe you and others playing. This will progress to partial participation, where the child will take part in some steps. Then eventually the child will participate in the entire activity, with or without support. Several visual systems can be seen being used during these sessions. This topic was covered in much more detail in our previous Getting Started DVD, so for a more complete guide to the use of these systems, please refer to that manual and DVD. The manual can be downloaded and the video viewed online. See page 84 of the manual for more details. Because children vary enormously in their rate of growth and development, it's important that equipment and toys are chosen carefully. Page 85 of the manual has a range of questions to ask when selecting equipment. Play is a critical part of growth and learning. Being able to participate as fully as possible in play sessions will benefit both the child and you. And always remember to have fun.